I also saw that Carlo Oscar joined. Perfect. Hi, all. Hi. Okay, so uh, if everyone is okay, we're going to start. <clears throat> For sure, there will be other people joining, but uh, yeah, I think it's important to stay quite on track. So uh, hi again, thanks a lot for joining the connection session in which we'll try to keep it a little bit organized. So we're going to have three stages, so to say, we want to keep it overall informal. So the first part would actually consist of short presentation from uh, each major research center from uh, the association. Afterwards, we'll have a brief presentations from the PhD students who uh, register for the event. And we're actually really interested in seeing uh, what are they doing uh, in their program. And afterwards, informal discussions in order to establish new connections and to see whether new research paths uh, emerge. Uh, in the first part, so uh, on my side, and we can change order, it's nothing uh, pre-established. So I started from uh, west towards east. So hopefully my geography is okay. So I would say that Oscar is by far the first one to present. Afterwards, I said uh, Matthias from Alborg. Uh, we've got Carlo from Rome. Uh, Donatella, unfortunately, she hasn't uh, joined uh, the session, but uh, Palermo, if I'm okay. Geography there is a little bit tricky. And as we finish to Romania, and we've got Elvira and uh, Stefan from Elvira from University of Craiova and uh, Stefan from UPB. And in terms of the um, young researchers who registered, I would propose to have them present, so have the short presentation in alphabetical order of their uh, first name. Okay. So if it's okay with everyone, I would invite Oscar to have a, a short presentation of their uh, ongoing research and their interest. So let me just put my microphone on. Thank you very much. Hope you all had a nice lunch. Unfortunately, I a lot better after lunch. lunch. Yep. It wasn't yet a Romanian lunch, but we still hope to, to try it out. Uh, let me just uh, start my, I have here eight slides, eight slides for you. Uh, just to quickly contextualize, and then we can get into bigger detail, but I won't be showing um, all the slides uh, I have of the research center. So we can really just contextualize and then leave the questions and so on discussion to get into more details if needed, okay? Let me just grab here my second desktop. Okay, here goes. I think you are all, you are all getting my desktop at this point? Yep. Uh, the big projection, right? The second desktop. You're getting yes. it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvelous. Okay. Marvelous. Uh, so the research center, it's a digital media and interaction research center. It goes by this name. It was, um, we were evaluated uh, just last year. <clears throat> Actually, it was the year before, but last year we got the result in 2019 in the beginning. And it's not a maximum, uh, it's not the maximum score of our evaluators, international evaluators, but it was the score just afterwards. So it has an almost excellent score, which is very good in our national uh, panorama. The, this is our website for any of you that are interested, then we can go through that. So um, Digital media focus and mission. Okay, of course, as the name, the, the name already reflects what we do here. It's uh, very concerned with uh, interaction, but uh, in technology mediated contexts, and we do work in several interdisciplinary research contexts. Okay, uh, and and it's as 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 we have here in our mission statement. That's completely um, committed to foster power of digital media, including web, mobile, games, and interactive TV technologies, and of course, towards an inclusive digital society. Uh, our, our, uh, just, just to get the big picture, uh, we are in, in the Department of Communication and Art. So 
if you'd ask us, okay, you, you work on technology mediated contexts, uh, that means you are related to technology. Our background, main scientific area is social sciences and human communication and information sciences. Okay, that's important because our first and main perspective is human communication and information. Okay. Uh, so, user experience, of course, cyber culture, communication, human communication, human computer interaction, uh, this historical area that comes from computer science, but not only, of course, and um, uh, dealing with societal challenges, which is, of course, our common keyword nowadays, and user experience also. So, if we wanted to represent this, we would get here these three main dimensions the ones you see here in green, blue, and, and orange. The media convergence and cyber culture would be one of, our, uh, one of our dimensions of study. The other one is knowledge media and connected communities. And the other one, new media and digital entertainment, okay? This then goes into what we would call research groups. They are very dynamic. They are not formal research groups. Uh, they are just smaller units where we kind of organize ourselves. Each member can belong to, in fact, two or three of these groups, games and trends, media, cyber culture, social media and learning, and so on. Okay. And if you visit our website, you'll understand how all this really reflects then in our projects and, and so on. Um, so we have 29 researchers, 24 collaborators, and 41 PhD students. Okay. When we mean researchers, we are speaking of uh, higher education um, institution staff, so teachers, uh, which also do research, of course. Collaborators are teachers outside of the university's ecosystem, but uh, some of them are also PhDs of other institutions, higher education institutions, and 41 active PhD students in our two main PhD programs, okay? So uh, let me get this all for you. If we want to look at our partners in Portugal, we, are, we have direct collaboration, in fact, joint collaboration with University of Minho in the north, University of, of Porto, where we have a, a joint doctoral program, with whom we have a joint doctoral program, and University of Lisbon, with whom we also have another joint uh, doctoral program at the moment. We are getting um, finance from several entities here in Portugal. Uh, foundations are in your top left corner. Uh, in the top right corner are companies with which we work with. And in the right uh, um, bottom uh, corner is associations and public um, institutions with which we maintain an active uh, joint uh, research and development activities, okay? Um, so, if we want to look at this worldwide, well, in the top we have, of course, Ajlert, with which we still haven't had the opportunity of getting a joint, nice and juicy research financed opportunity, but uh, we've been doing uh, nice. Yesterday I was mentioning that. I mean, we don't have to wait for money to do joint things. We've been doing a lot of joint things. We, to, uh, Alborg has been um, actually coordinating two applications that had an, an, a very good score. Matthias can, if anyone's interested, Matthias can explain what went on there with two Marie Curie applications that really had a very high score, but unfortunately not financed and so on. All the universities with which we have some kind of collaboration and joint work, okay? Um, uh, when we go to research ecosystem, we have projects related with all these institutions and companies, okay? Google is related. We have an ongoing project with Google related with their news finance uh, um, opportunities here in Portugal. And one of our, our colleagues is, has, has something going on with them and all the other entities we are working with, okay? Where are we? We are inside a campus, university campus at Aveiro. So it's the, let's say, public university. Um, uh, we work with 40, 49 organizations and it's, um, it has, it's a campus with about 16,750 
uh, people inside students and teachers okay students it would be about 15,000 students inside campus it's um, and we're also working with uh, 19 basic and secondary schools okay seven higher education institutions this would be um, uh, what we are uh, another view of our uh, our ecosystem and our, our campus here okay this we would get into the projects I wouldn't line up all the projects we have right now I think this is like just a quick five, 10 minute overview, right, uh, Mihai? So we don't get into, if anyone has questions, then I can get, I got, as, as you can note, I have some more slides on the projects and other interests, but I, I'll keep it to, to these contextualized slides of the areas where we work and so on, okay? Thank yeah, you very it much. It was perfect, exactly. The overview so that all participants get to know what you're doing. Okay. At, yeah. Yes. So we can go into deeper probing of, of, of our interests, what we do with the questions, and of course, with all the colleagues that might have any interest. So thank you very much. Yeah, uh, and also, uh, I've created a Google folder, and if it's okay with everyone to share their presentations and the yeah. contact, so yeah, that after this session, everyone yeah, can browse and yeah. Yes, and leave their slides there or so on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. I've, pasted it in the chat and I also saw Carlos comment I, and I feel really bad. I actually searched on Google and that's the main uh, address Google indicated. So I'm really sorry for my uh, confusion. So uh, now if it's okay, I would uh, leave this, uh, the floor or the screen to Matthias. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a completely different approach to the presentation. So thank Perfect. you, Oscar. Oh, yeah. That was uh, really nice. But <laughs> I, uh, I'm more focusing on two specific projects that we're running. So uh, if anybody's interested, I can also do this more general overview of the group and so on. But uh, let's have a look at uh, what I prepared. If I can start this, here we go. So uh, I'm heading the human machine interaction group. And since last year, I am a director of an HRI lab here in Oilbor. And that, uh, or a consequence of that is that we focus a lot on robots currently. Um, and, but we can also see robots as ingredients for smart learning ecosystems. And we have projects running in a specific field there. We look at uh, children or adolescents with uh, learning challenges. Um, so we try to utilize robots as tools or ingredients for, for inclusion uh, or inclusive learning uh, um, possibilities. So uh, as I said before, I'm heading the human machine interaction group. So we switched computer out with machine because we also use robots and other technologies. So uh, that's basically the reason for that. But what we do is we have a very technical perspective on it, right? So we focus on uh, multimodal interaction, uh, embodied interaction, how do we use gestures, facial expressions, gaze, and so on uh, when we interact with systems. And I brought one little example here. That was a, a project we had together with uh, Kunsten, the Museum of Modern Art here in, uh, in Olbor where we uh, try to somehow digitize their uh, paper treasure hunt. Uh, and we used a, a virtual character that uh, uh, helped the kids explore these artworks. And uh, it worked very well uh, for the museum. It worked too well, as you can see, the kids started <laughs> uh, trying to touch the artworks, which was a nice uh, effect, but not so welcomed by our partners there. But anyway, so but what we look at is uh, two side, or actually three different aspects of a system like that. And uh, you can um, take the tablet away, put a robot in, or any other technology that we're talking on about. So we look at signal processing part. So how do we get interesting input from the user um, in terms of, for instance, their facial expressions, their gestures, as we can see here, um, or other types of input. And then, of course, we look at the system behavior part. How can we plan, generate, synchronize different output uh, that it makes sense in this learning scenarios? And then, of course, we have uh, 
the uh, the reasoning part behind it, uh, where we look at uh, what do we do with this information that we can uh, get from the user, how is that interpreted uh, in the context of the task that we have, and what does that mean for the next step in the interaction, and uh, is one extra keyword, which is the group dynamics, because every time we go out uh, in the field and test stuff, uh, we never have a scenario like, uh, like this one where we just have one user, but usually it's a group of learners, a group of kids uh, in terms of the uh, adolescents with brain damage, which I will talk about in a minute. We have uh, our, uh, our main user, but then there's always staff around for helping them. So it's always a group interaction that we have to look at. Uh, and that makes it uh, different from a, the, all the dialogic models that we find uh, in HCI. Um, if we look at smart learning ecosystems, we have a very specific focus. So, and this is the slide where I would like you to uh, black it out later for the, uh, for the publication because we have some clear pictures here for our participants. So we focus on kids or adolescents with learning challenges. And uh, during the last uh, three years, we have worked with uh, adolescents with uh, congenital brain damage. And we start now working with kids uh, with dyslexia and see how we can uh, utilize these technologies often in these institutional care settings uh, that we can see here on the, on the slides. And what's interesting about that is that education there does not only focus on conveying the knowledge or conveying facts or whatever, but it focuses actually on uh, acquiring personal and social competences uh, at the same time, because these kids, especially in this scenario, uh, have lived in institutions their whole life and they everything has been scheduled for them. So they lack a little bit the, the tools to uh, organize their social life and their personal life themselves. Um, but uh, after they leave this institution, they will actually live in their own uh, apartments, uh, of course, with help, but the idea is that they are able to organize it themselves. So all the learning activities that are realized in a, in a care center like that are also uh, targeted towards uh, the social and personal development. And um, we tried out a lot of different things. Some we've presented here on the conference, some are uh, uh, also as journal articles for the interaction design um, journal. So that we have focused on music therapy, we have focused on collaborative drawing and so on. And currently uh, we look at, uh, at robots. And um, the reason for that is the, that the, the management came to us and they wanted to do something with robots, interestingly enough. And we thought, uh, yeah, but why <laughs> and what? <laughs> and then uh, we started discussing with them and we, uh, we looked into more detail of what they do. So if you look at the learning scenarios so they have, there is something about cognitive development, looking at knowledge or reasoning skills. There's something with physical de development, like training motor skills, uh, moving an arm, uh, being able to use a joystick on an uh, electric wheelchair and so on. And then there's the, sh uh, the social development for scaffolding social interactions or doing collaborative tasks. And if we look at this idea of throwing robots in the mix, the idea was that uh, ideally they should somehow relate to these, uh, these different goals that they have. So uh, we went to their classrooms and uh, had a look what they do. And then uh, we, uh, we came up with a scenario where we use robots as semi-autonomous tools in a collaborative learning game um, where the robots uh, help to level the playing field. Yeah? So the idea is uh, you have a matching task. Uh, we see an example here, there's a uh, written red on the, on the board and then there's the red cone. So you have to, uh, to uh, control your robot and let it move to the red cone. Not everybody has the, the physical or the motor skills or even the cognitive skills to, to do that. And then sometimes the robot takes over part of that. So that's why it's semi-autonomous. So it helps, uh, it helps um, 
leveling out the different cognitive and motor abilities that uh, the adolescents and the parents or relatives have. And uh, the thing is, or that what moves it um, further away from the classroom is that we actually integrate this uh, idea of collaboration so they can work together uh, to solve a task. They can also compete. Uh, sometimes they want to do that. And they have uh, physical training because they actually have to control uh, these robots with a joystick or a button. And uh, we can integrate some rehabilitative strategies uh, from physiotherapy in there. So we ran a lot of field tests during therapy sessions, during open houses where uh, relatives and guests come in. And uh, what we see is that uh, first of all, we actually were able to level the playing field. So even if they play together with the relatives, some are able bodies, they no longer need to cheat and uh, uh, pretend they are not good enough to play. So uh, they, we just make it harder for them. Yeah, so that's the other way we can adapt. Uh, we can also make it harder for those that have uh, no problems in controlling these robots. And then we get a win ratio of nearly 50-50, which makes it interesting to play for all of the, of the parties there. Uh, and the more interesting thing is if we look at the positive and supportive social interactions between the adolescents themselves, then there was nothing before they started uh, uh, using these kinds of technologies. And afterwards, we see that we have uh, actually an increase in social interactions between them. So if they played several sessions in, uh, together on this game, they actually start collaborating or talking to each other later on in the common room and so on. And that's uh, one of the best uh, results that we got. Um, that's one example of what we do. Uh, another one uh, we just start up, uh, that's a uh, collaboration with Honda Research Institute. They are currently, uh, or they have developed a new tabletop robot, uh, which they will uh, start pitching now, at least uh, on the research community, and then later on as a product, a very cute little thing. And the idea is uh, to explore the use of it as personal motivator for kids that are challenged with, uh, with tasks. And there we work together uh, with, uh, with the Association for Kids with Dyslexia, uh, where we uh, try to explore how such a tabletop, let's call it companion, uh, could, uh, could be used for motivating uh, training exercises for these kids. So these are two of the examples of what we do, how we try to use robots uh, in these uh, quite challenging uh, scenarios. If you want to know more, uh, feel free to look up our website. And of course, we can discuss uh, further on in the, in the session here if uh, anybody wants to join these efforts. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. But my curiosity is that robot already built? So the one. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it's currently, it's, uh, yes, there are um, specific research uh, uh, models available for the partners of Honda, but uh, it's actually uh, manufactured in the real sense of the work, right? So there is a okay. very <laughs> limited amount of uh, systems available currently. Okay. <laughs> Really nice. So limited production. Okay. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Carlo, can you please have an overview of what you uh, um, Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I was not uh, ready to uh, to give a presentation, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, asked me kindly to say some words. So I will uh, share some uh, slide, but I go through just to explain more or less what has been uh, uh, our lab in the in the recent past, uh, we have been always at uh, let's say cross border between uh, uh, technologies, uh, education, and design. And uh, I show very uh, very uh, briefly um, some of uh, the achievement that we uh, obtained it during the past. Yes, um, I will not go in a presentation mode. Uh, I I think that you you are you seeing the 
Yeah, okay, it should be somewhere, yeah, okay. So uh, basically, uh, uh, so you will try, uh, uh, um, all the time I'll try to, uh, uh, to bring the, the students to think about the future vision. That's uh, the starting point uh, in, in each course that uh, I, I give. And uh, to give you an example, in 2003 uh, was the time of uh, uh, minority report. We were developing uh, this kind of uh, globes at, uh, at, uh, uh, at the university with which we were able to interact uh, with uh, some, uh, let's say, 3D environment. So uh, uh, you see that uh, awesome. this uh, put together interaction, communication, and also uh, possible education. This was in 2003. So, and then uh, uh, of course we tried to uh, develop also uh, an environment for learning, and this was life. <clears throat> At that time, it was very advanced uh, because we started in 2001 to, to develop this environment. And actually, for example, we introduced also uh, the time feeling for the user well behind before that has been done by other uh, social networks. Um, here I can show some other uh, uh, some other studies that, of course, uh, being uh, uh, between the uh, at the crossing between education, also design, and uh, also. Uh, um, uh, so you just, um, uh, technologies means to to deal with the human computer interaction as uh, has been done by Matthias, and this means also to think about how to detect uh, several kind of interaction. So, for example, we use eye tracking to look at uh, uh, which was the visual interaction. We uh, developed an emotional uh, perception tester in order to understand. Uh, uh, which is uh, the, 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 how the emotion are brought by different kinds of stimulus, uh, for example, text, but also figures, uh, movies, uh, music, etc. So, and um, we also, uh, we also uh, developed some kind of uh, a short, uh, very, uh, I mean, very simple interaction with the uh, keynets. This is a sort of uh, uh, interaction board that is projected, just projected. And so you see the point, the red point is the registration of the hand that is uh, moved by the, uh, the, the, the people just in front of uh, it. And they can allow, of course, to take information in this case about an exhibition, but that, that can be used also for several other uh, uh, tool uh, task uh, as um, we will see probably in a moment. Uh, but uh, well, uh, yeah, okay. okay. All these tasks at games uh, like this one. This has been is a very uh, simple archaeology, but the, the idea was to get to have this outside of the museum in order to uh, stimulate the, uh, the children to uh, get inside and have uh, a museum experience. So then, uh, for example, uh, we also developed uh, this. This was a very uh, long time ago. Now there are a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, augmented uh, touristic experience, but this was in 2010. And so we had this uh, application for the, we call it WikiWiz, and this is the application with which you were able to uh, perform uh, interactive, uh, interactive uh, um, uh, visit of, uh, of the, villages or cities and uh, of course we integrated also the sensor so that you could get uh, information about the where the place so, uh, where and so but this was uh, a lot of time to go i mean now it's uh, it's a little bit uh, so we also uh, developed this uh, recording i mean this was a, a, a tracking uh, of uh, your path and the idea was to have uh, integration of several parts and uh, picture that was taken by the tourists in order to have uh, an information about the tourist experience. So this were, uh, was, was an app that was developed to try to augment the, 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 the common experience, the touristic experience. 
Um, just to give you some other flowers, this is a music, music pad. This was developed uh, um, with the students of uh, uh, the music, uh, say, uh, um, music science path. And this was to to narrate uh, tales to the uh, to the, the children, so though they they could interact. The, you can change just the, the cover and you have another another story so that you can interact with another tales and just uh, get uh, different noise or or uh, tales from this uh, this uh, uh, element uh, this is another um, and is another application that was developed to uh, uh, learn uh, to make p uh, small children learn about music and this is a multiple, uh, uh, let's say, it's completely different ideas of uh, uh, percussion. So you see it's an augmented one in which you can uh, experience a different kind of uh, uh, learning. So about melody, about... Uh, you can experience by yourself, but you can also experience with uh, other people that... Uh, you. So the idea is that there's a rest for children uh, with five, six, seven years, but of course can be used also by uh, others. And this was uh, the preliminary, uh, the preliminary uh, prototype that eventually could be uh, brought to production uh, like this one. This is also, um, for example, uh, we were also uh, about uh, we were also involved in uh, design developing uh, some sort of uh, augmented jewel, and this was the case again. Uh, reminding about the minority report, it was a jewel a ring that you can separate in three, put in the three different and then you can have uh, uh, you can interact with the light uh, that can be detected by a, a, um, a camera. Uh, this was a, 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 a augmented uh, back sack that uh, the idea was to use this one to augment the, the let's say, your uh, strolling experience. So you can record, for example, uh, sound, you can record uh, um, features just uh, with the <coughs> just pressing one button on the <coughs> On this position, then you can also record, for example, the state of the the pollution and so on. So I mean, uh, you are a sort of uh, a sort of uh, a central uh, uh, central uh, getting data. So uh, just to make uh, also more simple things, uh, for example, we tried to several years ago also to develop some kind of emo chat. So now there are a lot of programs that allow you to transform. Uh, features is very much easier than once, but at that time there was nothing. So the idea was to create em emo em emoticons that represent yourself. So you can take a picture and you can use this one as emoticon. Uh, still nowadays there are not many applications on that. So I go very fast away and uh, we also, uh, for example, uh, have been promoting a, a group of students to be part of several competitions. This was, for example, a competition organized in, in Glorenza by the city of Glorenza. We brought some uh, group of students to, for a sort of a city hackathon. And then here we, for example, uh, try to uh, bring uh, in, uh, in Paris some other students from Rome. And in this year, in 2015, they also were the winner. So they developed a very nice, interactive, a very, uh, let's say, um, uh, all, uh, aesthetically also very nice garden that can give you also the condition of the plants that uh, were, were there. So, I mean, uh, uh, it was a nice experience. And more recently, we tried to, uh, to uh, follow uh, the students in the school and not at the university, and to try to uh, 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 getting more from there in order to uh, increase the, uh, the students' employability at uh, the secondary school level. So this was a, a, a prototype of uh, a social uh, part, uh, part finder, so let's say. So uh, 
but this is very very quickly i would like to show <coughs> also uh two more uh, uh two more things i'm going to change my um, my sharing just a moment um i don't know it oh ah, yeah stop share and uh, i will going to share another <coughs> presentation uh, and so i say you before uh, once that you deal with all this kind of stuff, and this has to do with the, the, the sign for the experience, and uh, the way to find out the optimal experience uh, from uh, uh, the support of technologies. Uh, once that you do this, you have also, as I say you before, to measure also the, the experience, and to measure on, on many different uh, levels. And measure means uh, not to be predictive, but it really means to detect what is going on. So we concentrate a lot of, uh, on the concept of traces. So, I mean, detecting the traces that we were developed by, were produced by, by uh, the user. Uh, so, for example, this was the detection or gesture in order to find uh, different uh, differences between the different style of the people. This was the, the way in which we were able to uh, detect how the people could, in principle, visit an, an exhibition. So, uh, we, did, we reproduced on a 3D uh, exhibition. And then uh, we use the two different ways to, uh, to visit the exhibition in virtual reality and directly using the laptop. And so you could uh, follow the track of uh, the people that was visiting the exhibition and realize, for example, that the, in, uh, there are some part of the exhibition that in some condition are not uh, actually visited. So it means that you, mm, that part was not able to attract to, to match the, the people. And of course, we try also uh, to, to uh, see what's happening in the games, for example. So, I mean, uh, to see if uh, um, uh, there are different, how you choose a, set, a given path when you are game, uh, playing uh, and which one, is, uh, why uh, you uh, will choose this. This can be done by detecting the traces, also uh, by eye tracker and so on. So um, we were, uh, as far as uh, uh, as far as uh, social, uh, as far as uh, learning, uh, we were uh, listening this morning about uh, about uh, uh, social interaction. This was the specific, uh, the particular forum that we designed to detect the one-to-one -one interaction, and this all of to use to the evolution of social interaction, and also at the same time. Uh, in, in integrated with the emotion and so we were able to to study also the integration of social interaction with emotional interaction what we call it uh, um, uh, social emo social interaction let's say we also performed with some group uh, the detection of emotion by brain so i mean uh, we can also uh, were able to detect uh, if the emotion can be uh, recognized uh, by the brain uh, we were using a stimulus, uh, the, the, the expression, phase expression. We also tried to understand if how you, we can uh, brought emotion into the voice. So I mean, understand which are the parameters that can be used to bring to to be, to to let's say to uh, to to make, uh, for example, a bot or to make. Uh, 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 a recorded voice and more uh, emotional uh, and more uh, more emotional so we studied uh, uh, many different parameters so um, I, I think that uh, mm, this gives you most of uh, I mean a, a more or less an idea what we've been doing in the past I would like just to add that uh, much more recently uh, we uh, we look at the how this experience, the good experience, the optimal experience can be uh, uh, carried on in cities and in learning ecosystem. And from these studies, I mean, br bringing all the the background experience into the city, into the learning ecosystem, we try to develop also the different uh, way to. Uh, um, let's say benchmarking the optimal experience in uh, in uh, in a school or in a university and so uh, what we call the smartness of those uh, 
those plates say, together with the other partner, we were able more or less to detect uh, the smartness of many different uh, uh, <coughs> campus uh, and as well their evolution along the time. We should uh, continue maybe sometimes because we are now stopped at <laughs> 17, 1917, but to, to 2017, but probably uh, we can get some more information now if things are changed or not. Okay, um, this is more or less so. I think that is enough uh, to, to, to give you an idea. And uh, of course, if you are questioning. Yep, that's perfect. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Uh, and now, still in Italy, uh, Donatella. Thank you. Uh, I, I actually didn't prepare any slides, uh, but uh, given that all of you have been showing slides, I have uh, found something. <laughs> Perfect right. improvisation, that's great. So, apologies if they are not particularly uh, aesthetic. Uh, can you see them? Yes. Okay, uh, just to give you an idea of the context of where I work, I don't work in a university, I work in a big research institution called the National Research Council of Italy. We are talking about uh, five or six thousand researchers uh, in uh, more or less uh, Mm, a little over 100 institutes in Italy. The headquarters are in Rome, but the institutes are located in different uh, Italian cities. In particular, the institute where I work uh, is called the Institute for Educational Technology, and it is located in uh, Genoa, where we have uh, also the, um, the main uh, basis. Uh, but there is also a, a branch in Palermo, uh, which is in Sicily, uh, which is more or less as big as the Genoa headquarters, let, let's call them. I'll try to move to the next slide. Yes, to give you an idea, Genoa is here, Palermo is exactly at the other side of Italy. So, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> actually, actually, mm, the Institute in Genoa was founded in 1970, when in Italy there was not even a term for educational technology. The term Tecnologie Didattiche was uh, coined by the, the former direct, the first director of ITD, uh, and he was really a pioneer and uh, nobody knew what technology and didactic or educational technology was in Italy at the time. Later on, uh, CNR founded, uh, founded another uh, institute called more or less with the same name. And we worked uh, separately in the same fields, uh, almost in competition for several years. Then there was a reform of CNR and uh, uh, the two institutes, um, it was actually a request uh, uh, of the researchers, were merged into one, which is called uh, at the moment the uh, Instituto per le Tecnologie Didattiche. So this is the situation. You have uh, more or less, we have more or less 30 full-time researchers, uh, actually 30 staff, including administrative and technicians in Genoa, and uh, uh, almost uh, another 30 um, temporary researchers uh, in Genoa, and the same, same numbers in Palermo, just to give you an idea. So it's uh, one of the many institutes of CNR. Of CNR. CNR doesn't carry out a research only in educational technology. Actually, this is the only institute that works in this field. CNR usually devotes its institutes to fields of research, which uh, are so, sort of neglected by university because they are too interdisciplinary for university to have the right structure to deal with them. So universities, uh, in Italy, like in other countries, are structured 
very much by disciplines, physics, mathematics, uh, uh, whatever, while CNR has uh, interdisciplinary institutions. So our staff includes uh, psychologists, uh, linguists, uh, pedagogists, uh, engineers, uh, computer scientists, etc. So this uh, uh, structure of CNR institutes uh, lends uh, itself very well to interdisciplinary fields. Uh, well, ITD was a pioneer certainly in Italy in the ed tech uh, sector, as I said, it even created the, the, the term. Um, and uh, contributed to the creation to a research community in the field, which is now much more widespread because in universities there are now uh, individuals and also teams that work in the field uh, throughout uh, Italy. Uh, ITD has also always participated uh, to uh, European uh, framework programs. Uh, I'm talking well, we started uh, with the Delta exploratory phase. So I'm talking about 1980s. Uh, so uh, we, we coordinated the project uh, in the very early days of uh, what the EU would have come to, to call a technology enhanced learning field. Um, trying to focus, uh, well, the Institute covers uh, almost uh, all the, the, the areas of research in educational technology. So I'm not going to list all of them. I, I will focus on what I am interested in and the fields of work where I've been uh, active, uh, at least recently. Uh, well, Certainly teacher training, models of teacher training, uh, both online and blended and uses of educational technology in teacher training, but also teacher training on educational technology. So uh, uh, we have been involved uh, uh, also in the training of teachers uh, in the field of educational technology. Um, I'm particularly interested in uh, uh, and I've been for many years now in online collaborative learning uh, and the way teachers could, uh, should uh, or might be supported in the design of online collaborative learning activities. And in this area, we have developed uh, systems for the, uh, for, to support the learning design process uh, uh, that we have been also experimenting with during several European projects. Another theme, a uh, research theme that I'm very much interested in is uh, self-regulated learning. You might uh, have guessed already given that I tend to bring it <laughs> to the table <laughs> of the discussion pretty pretty uh, often and this is because I think uh, it is a crucial area uh, we should be all focusing on because people when we train uh, well in education uh, young people today uh, are being educated for living and working in a society and also for jobs that we don't know yet. So there's no way to guess what they will have to become, what their professional development will be in terms of specific contents. Because uh, we, we know the, land, the technological landscape is changing so fast that the, mm, it's uh, almost useless <laughs> to try to guess what will happen. But what we can do is to teach them to have a good control of their own learning process, which is exactly what self-regulated learning is about, from the cognitive, metacognitive, but also emotional and motivational point of view. So I think 
teachers and uh, researchers in, in the field of educational technology have to focus uh, on methods uh, and approaches uh, to develop students' uh, self-regulated learning abilities. And uh, so uh, this is probably one of the strongest interests uh, I have. I've also worked uh, in the field of game-based learning and uh, I've done some work in the field of learning analytics. But I must say, in the case of learning analytics, I think it's uh, some, something, I haven't been doing research on learning analytics per se, but usually been studying how to use learning analytics as a researcher to gather data that are useful for my research in, say, game-based learning, self-regulated learning, learning design, etc. So um, uh, I have a vision of the field of learning analytics more like a user than a researcher and user than like a researcher in the specific field of learning analytics. Still, I, I believe it is uh, uh, for researchers, it is an essential field to, to leverage on because uh, uh, so far we've been studying learning processes, uh, for example, self-regulated learning processes through, through um, uh, self-reported data or uh, evidences of various types of the learning of the students, uh, but uh, learning analytics uh, can provide us uh, with the information of the processes which are not filter filtered as uh, self-reported uh, data that we all know have uh, serious limitations. The, so the strength of learning analytics for researchers in educational technology is that they they do not have the limitations of other kinds of data that we've been using so far. The limitation, and we have to be aware of that as well, is uh, uh, that in, when we talk about learning processes, uh, there are many latent uh, data, later, latent processes in the mind of the students, and these uh, aren't always visible, not even with uh, observations, uh, nor with learning analytics tools uh, or in other ways. And so we shouldn't oversimplify uh, our work uh, by assuming that with learning analytics, uh, we know what the students, all, all that the students do, because for learning, it is almost more important to know what they think than the, what they do. And this is not trackable. It is uh, probably uh, can be uh, worked out in some way from the actions they make. Talking about main, my main uh, research activities bes besides uh, national and international research uh, projects, that's my job. I've been uh, teaching at the university of Genoa as a lecturer in educational technology. Um, presently, I'm, uh, uh, I am in the board of the Venice uh, Doctoral School. It's a doctoral school in philosophy and education. And I teach education technology there to the doctoral students. I am editor of the Italian Journal of Educational Technology an open access journal uh, which uh, has no article processing charges and it is in the uh, well in, in in italy we have a, a system of evaluation of journals and it's uh, top rent in this system and uh, i belong to several boards of uh, international journals uh, and uh, other types of professional boards. So that's more or less uh, uh, 
what uh, my activity consists in and my main research interest. That if needed, I can go into more detail of some of them. Thank you very much. It's perfect. And I would have the kind request. So I now know that we are switching to the Romanian side, but please keep around 10 minutes maximum. So the presentations are extremely nice and interesting, but unfortunately I saw that it's already uh, 3.25 and we only have around 40 minutes to finish the session. And I would actually love for all the, the young researchers to present themselves at least so that we know of their uh, interests. Elvira, please. Hello. Yes, I will uh, only take five minutes, so it's okay. Just one second. Wow, so you're five minutes. Wow, okay. You can have ten, so it's clearly <laughs> that we can extend a little bit. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen already? The presentation? It says has started screen sharing, but unfortunately it's blank on my side. So it's totally black. Uh, hmm. Is anyone else seeing uh, Elvira's screen or? Uh, it's the no, same for I'm me. Not. Let me start again. <laughs> okay, sure. What about now? Yes, perfect. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, uh, yes, as you mentioned, Craiova is uh, west from Bucharest, about um, 200 kilometers west from Bucharest. And uh, we have a very beautiful uh, park here. You can see uh, the suspended bridge uh, of, of our park here. It's one of the um, largest natural parks in uh, Eastern Europe. And um, in the center, you can see the main building of our university, which is uh, quite large by uh, Romanian standards. It has about uh, actually more than 20,000 students. And uh, now, if I can advance the slides. <laughs> okay, um, a brief overview of our uh, research uh, directions. Um, a slightly older one uh, refers to computer supported collaborative learning and more specifically to the use of social media tools for um, social learning environments. And um, here there are three main approaches for um, designing uh, special purpose social media tools for educational use. And uh, our team contributed to each of these uh, directions. Uh, the first approach is to extend the general purpose, so existing uh, social media tools with educational uh, support features. And we proposed Colern which is an extension of MediaWiki platform with uh, collaborative learning support. A second um, approach is to build um, dedicated standalone uh, educational social media tools. And here we proposed um, an educational social network service called Intend, and also um, a social bookmarking and recommendations system for um, learning object retrieval called uh, EDU3R. And um, finally, a third approach is to integrate uh, multiple social media tools in a fully fledged educational platform. And we propose EMUs, uh, which provides um, integrated access to blog, wiki, and Twitter. And um, it retrieves uh, students' actions with uh, each of these uh, tools um, and um, provides a summary of students' uh, activity, uh, various graphical visualizations, um, comparisons with peers, uh, and the various aggregated data. And uh, we used uh, EMUs for uh, six years with over um, 400 students from um, our university. So we gathered a lot of data that we wanted to analyze and 
uh, this takes us to our second uh, research direction, which is uh, social learning analytics. Uh, and in this context, we performed um, uh, analysis from multiple perspectives. So we explored uh, specifically uh, the, the less explored context of social learning environments and focusing especially on our um, EMUS platform. And um, as I said, uh, we um, used various perspectives. Uh, we are trying to identify uh, academic performance predictors, um, analyzing the relationships between students' learning style and their social media use, um, investigating students' collaboration patterns, and um, exploring the community of inquiry supported by um, social media tools. Um, and as far as analysis techniques are concerned, we used various approaches such as classification, regression, um, clustering and PCA algorithms, uh, social network analysis techniques, and also content analysis based on the community of inquiry uh, model. Um, and uh, finally, uh, another research direction that um, uh, my, my PhD student is also going to talk about uh, a bit later, it refers to um, peer assessment in technology enhanced learning. And in this uh, sense, we applied two distinct approaches. On one hand, we integrated enhanced peer assessment features in a Moodle learning management system. And this work was done um, in cooperation with the research team from um, Sapienza University in uh, Rome. Um, and on the other hand, we built a comprehensive uh, peer assessment platform from scratch called uh, LearnEval. Um, and um, we already presented it in several papers focusing on various uh, aspects of the platform. Um, the instructor support, the learner support, the open learner model, um, a first experience report, and uh, now a comparative study on uh, different um, project-based learning settings that we are going to present uh, next week at uh, iCult uh, conference. And we have already used uh, this platform uh, in six courses with over 300 students, um, but uh, we still want to, there is still room for improvement, so we still, we still want to extend and refine uh, the platform and um, Gabriel Bada is going to uh, give some more information about that uh, soon. Okay, so um, if you are interested in these uh, issues and in the papers I've mentioned, you can find all of them on my uh, webpage and you can also contact me by email, of course, and uh, I'd be happy to find some opportunities for uh, collaboration. Okay, so uh, I hope I I hope it Good was luck. five minutes, as uh, promised. Mm, eh, it depends. It's okay. relative. <laughs> it was eight minutes, but it oh, turned okay. towards five. Okay. <laughs> okay. No problem whatsoever. Uh, and now uh, it's my pleasure to invite Stefan so to present what we're doing in our research group. And there's extended ideas, of course. Okay, thank you. I will uh, start by sharing the screen. Do you see my uh, shared screen? Yep. Okay, so uh, first of all, I think uh, I will try to to speak for five minutes, uh, but in fact, we have a lot of work and research and things to be said about our uh, group. So I will speak about the uh, K-Teams, uh, Collaborative uh, Knowledge Construction Laboratory, which I had in uh, the Computer Science Department of University Politecnica of Bucharest. University Politecnica of Bucharest is the biggest uh, technical university in Romania. Our department is the biggest department in the university, and I, I suppose also in Romania, it's a very big department. And we have a very nice uh, laboratory with a lot of uh, persons, as you see here. So I'm uh, heading it. It's uh, also Mihai uh, helping me. It's also now a professor. Uh, Traiare Beda, which uh, is also involved in the conference organization and uh, well, other 
in fact, former PhD students, which now uh, you see are professors like Mihai and so on. Uh, PhD students, researchers, we have a very nice uh, team. Uh, as research topics, uh, basically we are focused on uh, natural language processing, but in general for e-learning. Uh, we have a lot of uh, papers, published cit citations, papers at uh, the most important conferences in the domain, especially for the ITS we had this year, also best paper award. Uh, we have more than 160 papers indexed in the ISI uh, database, collaborations with uh, many uh, universities. The most important are uh, with Grenoble, Arizona State University, Ludwig Maximilian, Nick Nistor, Georgia State, but also some several others. Uh, also, we have a, a lot of projects in uh, here is not, uh, it's only a selection, it's not the whole list of projects. We have a uh, European funded project like uh, RAGE, it's a, what it just finished, it's a Horizon 2020, uh, FP7, uh, Erasmus and so on. I will uh, now very quickly, very briefly present you some slides. For example, RAGE, it was a, a project for serious games. So it's also uh, related to e-learning. Uh, another project we just completed was a Erasmus Plus uh, Early Nutrition E Academy for Southeast Asia, which was a collaboration with uh, Munich, uh, Ludwig Massimilian University. And we developed a sort of intelligent tutoring system, simply here uh, also, and it used uh, for medical uh, education. Uh, we are involved also in uh, several cost actions. This is only one of them, uh, Republic of Letters, uh, and some others. I will not uh, present all of them. Also national projects, of course. Uh, so natural language processing, I told you, is the main uh, uh, processing uh, uh, way of uh, we, we use for different purposes, uh, starting from uh, analyzing uh, discourse, text complexity, developing conversational agents, opinion mining, and you'll, you'll see, I will not read uh, what is in the slide. Uh, the main uh, product we have developed in uh, recent years, uh, in fact, it started uh, when Mihai was, it's also now young, <laughs> it was younger and uh, it was a PhD. We've, uh, we started with Reader Bench and uh, we developed, in fact, Mihai, of course, is a main, main uh, developer uh, in several ways, several versions. And uh, it, uh, it was uh, designed for supporting both students and tutors, connect, as you see, a personal learning environment, uses different types of techniques, natural language processes, social network analysis, and so on, and it can perform a lot of tasks. Uh, maybe it's a uh, good idea, if you don't know, to see uh, the site. It's also an open source uh, project, uh, and you have a portal where you have a lot of details, some demos, uh, which uh, I hope you see the Okay, so you see a lot of demos, mainly based for uh, e-learning, but not only. Uh, and people, a lot of people who contributed uh, and uh, were involved and are involved in the Reader Band, starting, of course, with our group. You see here a lot of uh, former PhD students, uh, actual PhD students, master, and so on, Grenoble, Ludwig Maximilian University, Nignistor, uh, Arizona, Georgia State, and so on and so on. I will not. Uh, so you, I encourage you to, to look on that uh, website if you did not uh, do it yet. But uh, also, and uh, here I'm uh, now uh, uh, referring more to myself. <laughs> uh, I'm very interested, and for many, many years, I was involved in interdisciplinary research. I'm an engineer. We are a school of engineers. It's a technical uh, university. 
Unfortunately, not so many of uh, the students are uh, happy to <laughs> consider interdisciplinary research, but some of them are. And this is very important now from many points of view. Uh, and uh, this interdisciplinary research uh, was done in several uh, directions. One important direction is music generation, sonification. Uh, I will immediately say a little more. Uh, also research comparing music language and also co uh, com considering neurology uh, results and uh, analysis. A rhythm analysis, not only for music, but also for texts and for uh, this in fact was also taken uh, as an idea in reader bench. It's considered also rhythm analysis of texts. Human computer interaction, I'm also uh, teaching human computer interaction and uh, we uh, do research, you know, and maybe it's a good opportunity to say about the uh, international conference of human computer interaction, which is in Romania. And I encourage you to, to submit papers, it's Ju 10 July, that, the term. Uh, philosophy of, of artificial intelligence, creativity fostering, dialogism, aesthetics, stylometry, ethics. Ethics of artificial intelligence is very important and is related to education. In uh, Maybe you know that the uh, European Union just uh, elaborated and published a white paper on artificial intelligence uh, this spring in uh, April. And in that white paper, a lot of, uh, of the uh, text it's uh, also about ethical issues of artificial intelligence last year was in uh, beijing uh, unesco very very big conference on education and artificial intelligence and uh, there were a lot of discussions and it was also a document a consensus of beijing which was ad adapt or adopted for uh, education and artificial intelligence and also these aspects of transformation uh, post humanity so I collaborated with philosophers, psychologists, sociologists, and I'm uh, also doing research and writing uh, in this. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I can say that uh, computer sport collaborative learning, I started with this uh, in uh, 2004 when I started to collaborate with uh, Jerry Stahl in uh, Philadelphia uh, and uh, uh, analyzing computers, computer chats, chats uh, with uh, natural language processing. And I introduced a model based on uh, music and on the ideas of Mikhail Bakhtin. Uh, Nick Nistor also this morning uh, referred to it. The idea of polyphony, of multivocality and interanimation of voices in any text. And this is a, a way of analyzing collaboration in uh, chats and uh, discussion forums and in text also. And we used this in a uh, reader bench. It was one of the first uh, issues implemented in reader bench. Then uh, Mihai, uh, also if uh, Daniel Namara in Arizona uh, also considered uh, uh, text complexity with uh, uh, Grenoble analyzing uh, essays uh, by students and so on. So this polyphony model, I will not enter, uh, I've discussed about it many times. It's a model in general of collaboration and interanimation. It, 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 is a, uh, it can be applied for small groups, I said chats, large groups, intertextuality, and some other, and even you see here in a chat, you can identify some uh, voices, threads of ideas and uh, even uh, starting from it, you can uh, sonify, you can generate music. And uh, I will uh, finish uh, by uh, putting you, uh, I hope you, do you hear also? Yes, yes, we're getting the okay, sound. Okay, so I collaborated with a professor from uh, Academy of Music, and this is a sonification of a chat. And it can be used also as a kind of learning analytics. Uh, in fact, reader bench, of course, it's a very powerful learning analytics uh, environment. But uh, you, of course, a conversation which is very uh, uh, participants are involved, 
It's uh, like a nice music, uh, very uh, alert. Or uh, if it is uh, like this, is not so uh, so good. <laughs> And, uh, this professor uh, chose the instruments. Okay, I will uh, I will uh, finish here. I, I hope I was not so uh, long. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And it's clear that we don't have that much time left, so I would only go for a really quick roundtable for everyone else, so the young researchers to present themselves. And I already started discussing with Carlos, so for sure there will be a follow-up event in which we can discuss more about joint possibilities. So I would only give the floor to each participant to, to say a little bit about themselves. And uh, based on uh, my list, so I would start with uh, Dorinella. Hi, just a second to share my screen. Uh, I will stop, okay. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Uh, okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, this uh, session and thanks a lot for uh, your um, presentation. Uh, I'm Dorinella Daskalu. I'm a PhD student at the University Politecnica of Bucharest, Computer Science Department, having a supervisor, Professor Trushan Mato. Uh, I'm not in academics, only research. So, uh, my main job, let's say, uh, is software developer. I'm working at uh, one and one um, IONOS Romania, a German company. But uh, I'm doing my thesis for the thrill of it, let's say. I like to do something more than working um, in a big company. I want to do something for myself. And I think I like to be busy and I'm a very, very active person. Um, since my um, master's degree, I uh, published uh, 20 plus articles in uh, various conferences like uh, AIED, uh, SLERD, um, CSEL, and so on. And uh, uh, this is the third time at uh, CLEP. Uh, my research areas consist in uh, various natural language processing techniques and applications for uh, community analysis. Um, is a scoring and uh, personalized feedback generation, improve writing skill, and also sentiment analysis based on user uh, reviews. But uh, my recent uh, interests uh, are in um, evaluating uh, interactions between participants in online communities like MOOCs, Moodle, and blogs. For example, um, we evaluate the impact of homework deadline and test uh, in students' online activity, also behavior patterns. Uh, we model the interactions between uh, students, between participants, between students and teachers uh, using sociograms. Um, we also predict course grades based on student activity and, particip and their participation. We cluster participants in, uh, based on their activity in, for example, three clusters, active, peripheral, or central. And also we um, do some longitudinal uh, analysis and uh, we generate uh, weekly snapshots uh, in order to see how the community evolves from one week to the next. So yeah, this is a short uh, <laughs> overview. Um, if you are interested, and I'm, will, I will be very, very happy to collaborate. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So exactly this, two, three minute stops. And Eddie? Hi, um, <clears throat> so I'm Eduard Kojocha, and I am uh, a PhD student at Politechnica University, but I lag behind because of some health issues, but I had to continue my work at uh, my current job where I do the same thing what I, I should have done at the PhD, so I'm not that behind. So basically at my job, my job involves um, researching a system which can extract from video streams uh, relevant data regarding uh, people, such as uh, how many people were in that uh, uh, video stream, uh, the distribution of gender, of age, height, weight, and other such statistics 
which can be used for commercial value for shops, for example, or which can would detect anomalies such as uh, people fallen on the rail at the subway or uh, violent groups in uh, concerts or protests or whatever. So basically I'm, I'm very into computer vision. That's my main uh, research position. And that my, P my PhD topic was uh, regarding um, uh, self-driving cars, uh, but mostly in the part of assessing the environment, not in, I didn't get uh, into the decision making uh, process, just in the extracting information from the environment. And my work, I'm, uh, I'm working with uh, Trajan Rebeda, uh, all the papers that we published in the last two years uh, are together. And this is the uh, penultimate one for, uh, for the, that project, which will end in this autumn. Awesome. And I'm very, very interested in uh, the computer vision uh, field, uh, especially. And uh, I think it can be very useful in the educational uh, context, in analyzing educational videos or classes, for example. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh, Gabi? Yeah. One moment, please. Uh, the other Gabi, so Gabi Bada. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, just a second. Gabi, you can be next. Okay. Sure. Can you see my presentation? Yep. Okay. So I'm Gabi Bada. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Craiova in Romania. In the top left is uh, an image with, uh, with the city center. And uh, in the bottom right is the uh, University of Kreva. Uh, okay. My research interests. So my main area is peer assessment in technology enhanced learning. What is actually peer assessment? Peer assessment is also known as peer review. is actually the process in which students evaluate the work of their colleagues and provide summative uh, assessment in the form of grades but uh, also formative assessment in the form of uh, textual feedback. Uh, my achievements, so I've been working with my professor Elvira uh, and developing uh, LearnEval, a highly configurable peer assessment platform, uh, which integrates many um, functionalities and uh, also many benefits for both students and teachers, but um, the most important are reputation system that uh, actually models the learners based on various uh, various skills such as competence on the topic, uh, reviewing skills, as well as the involvement in the peer assessment process. Uh, the platform offers uh, various statistics uh, for both the uh, teacher and learners at various uh, granularity levels, also various scores. Um, open an open learner model is also accessible for the students, so students can access this learner model, um, which is actually in, uh, offered in two perspectives, in textual and visual, uh, uh, textual format and also visual format in the form of vi uh, various visual components such as uh, progress bars, uh, gauges and so forth. Uh, and the platform also integrates an automatic grade assignment mechanism. Uh, and this, uh, the grades are assigned uh, automatically by the platform uh, based on the evaluation provided by the students, but also based on the reviewing skills of the, of the evaluator students. Uh, currently, I'm, uh, I'm working on uh, researching new review allocation mechanism. So, what is a review allocation mechanism? So, uh, the automatic allocation of the so submissions provided by the students to the reviewers. Uh, and currently, um, there is not so much work on this area. Uh, and uh, also, um, I'm uh, looking forward to work on uh, review, rogue reviews detection mechanism. So, actually, detecting the reviews with an appropriate content or uh, reviews uh, that do not have uh, a high accuracy and so forth. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. And the other Gabi, since it was a confusion, my kind request is to keep it maximum two minutes because I would love to hear from everyone and unfortunately the other session is uh, coming right away, so.
Yeah, sure. I will be quick. One moment. Share screen. Let's see. Okay. Uh, this one. Yeah. Sorry. Some technical problems. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can let someone yeah. else present. Sure. Uh, Yulia, in this case. I muted. Yes, in a moment, mm -hmm. I am already sharing my screen. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yep, perfect. Okay, can this work? Can you also see the presentation now? Yep. Great. Uh, so my name is Ilya Pashov. I am a PhD student for at both universities, uh, Ludwig, Ludwig Maximilians and uh, Polytechnica Bucharest. Uh, my main uh, research uh, topic is uh, studying newcomer integration in online in, uh, knowledge building communities. However, I am also interested in, of course, learning analytics, NLP, knowledge communities, time-based feature, community abandon, uh, language model, and sentiment analysis. And um, I, since I also work in artificial intelligence, I um, added my work direction as well. And that is recommendation system, time series forecasting, Monte Carlo simulation, reinforcement learning, mathematical optimization, neural networks, and explainable AI. Um, okay. In regards of uh, tools and programming, I have added a page with uh, details regarding what I am comfortable programming in, my favorite uh, editor being Vim, uh, experience with uh, big data environments like Hadoop Spark and AWS, of course, uh, databases like Hive, Athena, or Presto, BigQuery, Postgres, Mongo. And uh, of course, I'm a big fan of uh, microservice architectures and pen and paper for explanations. Well, OK, so the final touch, old school. Really nice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, Irina, please. Uh, yes. Hi, let me share my screen. OK. Uh, so my name is Irina Toma. I'm a PhD student at the Polytechnic University of Bucharest and my coordinator is Professor Stefan Treușan Matu. Um, I'm interested in serious games that use natural language processing techniques um, and uh, my direction is mostly uh, teaching English to um, uh, non-native users, so English as a second language. Um, about me, uh, well, I've been in this, um, I've been a research assistant at the Polytechnic University since uh, last year, actually. Uh, but I've worked in a corporate environments, so from um, uh, 2012, I've been working in um, several places like Telmap and Dixia. Um, okay, let me go further. So, uh, my research directions. Um, I started um with um, um nlp in serious games um for uh, teaching um, uh, english to non-native users uh and this process has uh, multiple phases first of all we have vocabulary acquis acquisitions and uh, we developed uh, free games in this area like semantic bubble tableau and learner skill uh, second, we want to um, we want user to under, users to understand what they read and how they communicate. So we have the comprehension phase, uh, where we have a entertainment platform. Uh, later, we have the collaboration phase, where users start uh, to talk uh, between each other, and we have a game called the Robots and the Others for this uh, phase. And afterwards, once users are uh, confident in their skills, uh, we have the free text writing. Uh, area where we developed a um, uh, system, a learning management system uh, for um, um, essay evaluation and automatic um, essay scoring. Okay, um, I've, I think I'll stop here. Uh, we have a few concepts that we used in the games, but uh, I don't think it's so important for, uh, for right now. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Echo? 
can you describe a little bit your work and your interest? I'm fully aware that it's already five. I'll, yeah, still another five minutes so that we close this session and yeah. Hello, yes. Uh, do you think it's uh, better than uh, just to skip this uh, since I've been, uh, I think I'm gonna introduce myself later on or what do you think? However you prefer. Yeah, so um, yeah, I had this, uh, I had this uh, screen sharing in just a minute. So uh, can you see my screen here? Yep. All right, very good. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, greetings from Turku University. Actually, I'm in Helsinki at, my, my, at the moment myself. But uh, yes, uh, I'm working at the Center of uh, Learning and Analytics in, in our uh, university. And uh, where we are, um, we're exploring uh, these these features with the with the uh, platforms used in the Finnish schools, but also abroad. We have a we have a, a research uh, unit in the Department of, of Future Technologies, and uh, the most important uh, feature or most important project we have is the Billy Learning Platform here. And as we are just uh, experiencing time loss, I'll just skip directly into into this um, the learning learning a uh, tool uh, that's used across the country and uh, we're um, we're now exploring the potential with the uh, deeper anal analytics especially not just uh, reflecting uh, the, the statistics of how how um, how the, the students learn them the, the tasks and how they operate within the net so um, this is of course something to to uh, to discuss uh, furthermore but uh, uh, I'm looking forward to to get any get any context to to uh, continue with my own research uh, endeavors, which are mainly to regional development and uh, and also uh, the regional uh, let's say competitiveness of SMEs and uh, and businesses. So basically, that's my interest, and uh, uh, I have a <laughs> I have this. Um, if you guys have a QR code, so uh, reader, so uh, now it's time to uh, take it. Uh, so we, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just Thanks uh, a lot. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm uh, trying to show you guys this final, final here thing here. I don't know. Can you see this here? So we're ready to uh, get your ideas and uh, your um, research and also uh, as as I uh, saw that you some of you have already. Uh, some ideas to to uh, to elaborate, uh, elaborate. We can we can do that together as well. So perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, I'll think I'll skip to the next session then. Yep. See you there. Thank you very much. Bye. Uh, Stavros, can you please have a short presentation? Twenty seconds. Hello, I'm Stavros okay. from, the, from the University of Strathclyde here in Glasgow, Scotland. We are one of the biggest um, teacher education providers in Scotland. Actually, we are fourth in the UK. We are interested in research collaboration in the area of educational technologies. We do research on uh, mobile learning, uh, mm -hmm. ubiquitous learning, micro learning approaches into the blended learning um, um, approach. We uh, aim to get into the uh, robotics area and uh, virtual reality. Um, we are open to uh, discussions and the research collaborations in uh, learning technologies. Really thank you for the great experience in uh, this conference. Nice to meet you all today. And again, this is the University of Strathclyde. Thank you very much. Thank you on our side. It's actually an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay, and I think the last short presentation is from Gabi. I hope I haven't missed anyone. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, can you see the presentation in full mode now? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm uh, Gabriel Gutsu Robu. I'm, I have studied um, um, at Politechnica University of Bucharest, uh, the bachelor, the, the master's degree, and a PhD also, and I'm currently working. Uh, there in the K-Teams laboratory with Professor uh, Stefan Troshan and uh, with Mihai Daskalo and uh, the entire teams. And we are performing uh, multiple experiments related to natural language processing. Uh, in uh, this short presentation, 
from today, I would like to describe um, two experiments uh, where we try to uh, extract topics out of text. So uh, there will be a short overview, um, a description of the uh, HDP technique that we use, and then I will show you uh, the two experiments. So uh, the idea is that we have some questionnaires containing at least one free text questions, and we want to extract some knowledge out of that. So we want to see what are the topics that people talk about. Of course, we can split the responses uh, by category, for example, by uh, the uh, faculty or by their education or gender or age or whatever. So we can extract maybe different topics for different kinds of uh, people. And we do that using the uh, hierarchy hierarchical Dirichlet process, which uh, is based off on uh, latent Dirichlet allocation. Uh, the number of topics uh, is actually unbounded, so you can set uh, how many topics uh, you would like to uh, want, uh, you would like to have. Uh, so it, it is uh, the researcher's choice. Uh, and that is um, performed by um, uh, training uh, the uh, text, so the collection of uh, answers from uh, the user. Uh, it's an iterative process, so you, we, you start with a few topics, for example, with three topics, four topics, and so on, and you stop it when you feel like they make the most sense. So, for example, here's a preview of an al analysis uh, performed in English. So you see that we first had three topics with each topic containing ten, ten words. Uh, they have some uh, values. Uh, the more important they are, the higher the value is. And then we increased uh, the number to four topics, to five, and so on. So the researcher has to decide where uh, he or she should stop the analysis. So where do these topics make the most sense? And where are they more disjoint between them? And we did uh, two experiments. One is uh, with uh, Carlo Giovanella, on, uh, based on an Italian questionnaire about how did uh, COVID impact uh, distance learning. Uh, there were some, there were a lot of uh, respondents to the questionnaire and a lot of uh, questions also, but we chose uh, eight free text uh, questions out of that. I emphasized three of them here. So what are the problems encountered in developing or carrying out evaluation practices and what could be done, for example, and the two others, I will not read them because we are out of time. But I will show you, for example, for this question, which I marked as uh, AV, you see that, uh, at the step where we had five topics, you can see the most probable 10 words, for example. Uh, th these are in Italian, so uh, people from Italian may, may uh, see if they make any sense. But I have also an experiment uh, in English, so we, I will go on uh, to the other one. So again, this is another question in Italian, and the, this time I chose the three topics uh, step. And again, for another question, I chose the four topics step in here. And also I did um, filtering here because I chose only the primary school uh, responses. So not all of them. So you can see that you can categorize them by uh, whatever filter you want. Uh, the second experiment is based on an English question questionnaire about uh, students engagement in a learning platform, which is performed with Nick Nestor. You saw Nick, uh, Nick's presentation uh, today, in this, uh, today's morning. Um, there were uh, seven free text question, questions and we chose two of them. You, you can uh, see the questions there. So one of them is how do you choose uh, these teaching strategies? And the other one is which teaching strategies do you perceive to successfully support students' engagement? And you can see, for example, for question four, so this one, how do you choose these teaching strategies? Uh, for the government students, so again, I apply the filtering here just for the government uh, responses. Uh, I chose the four topics step, and you can see, for example, the first topic uh, refers to field, characterized, kind, year, formative, traditional, teaching, recent. There's the from V. I have, there was a short form of, of have. We, we should correct that, but let's um, get uh, rid of that for now. Let's uh, look at the, the second one. For example, the second topic refers to feedback, dependent, personal, fellow, lot, learner, and so on. So we Currently, we didn't an analyze the responses, but you can see uh, the first step of the experiment. So we now need to look into that and decide where should we stop the analysis? Where do these uh, topics uh, make the most sense so that they are uh, disjoint one from uh, each other and they represent something meaningful as a whole, each, each one of them. And the similar experiments for the Q, uh, Q5 uh, 
a question for private students this time. So again, we filter the responses with using the private, uh, the private filtering. Uh, yeah, so that's in short, we can of course discuss uh, more by mail. This is a I don't know, funny uh, picture that I found about classifying people, actually. Uh, actually, it was about classifying Americans, but I didn't want to be uh, too specific. I generalized generalize this picture, so I just wrote classification of people. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we had a round table. I thank you all a lot for participating. I'm sorry for being over time and with the overlap of the conference session, but I'll send to all participants a link with uh, all the presentations and we'll keep in touch and we'll also prepare a, a follow up session for this. So thanks a lot for your interest and see you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye.